As we do another episode in our Men's Ministries 101, I um, want to focus, get a little more specific on some, some areas. Today I want to talk to you specifically about integrating your men into prayer because of all the ministries that, that can take place, prayer is, is the most vital. If you can get your people uh, in your church, period, doing something that's going to make a difference for the whole church, it's prayer. More than service and works and, and any other thing, entertainment, fellowship, the thing that's going to make the difference is prayer. And, uh, and in dealing with men, getting your men to pray and letting them see that their prayer matters. And it's not so much that they prayed out loud. Uh, I remember going with uh, other pastors to prayer meetings, and you'd hear these pastors praying out loud, Oh, God, and, and you know, just kind of dominating all the air. And um, it's not necessarily getting your men to pray that way as it is getting your men to be intentional and specific in how they pray. And, um, and I want to share with you this uh, today in this video is about praying specifically for the church, but for the pastor, uh, having a, a prayer, a pastoral prayer team that you, you gather around your pastor or pastors uh, because the, where Satan's going to attack the most is the pastor. And if you can protect the pastor through prayer, lifting up his arms, uh, you're going you're gonna to enrich your church. The Bible shares the analogy that most times we use in men's ministry when it comes to being a prayer partner for the pastor is uh, in Exodus chapter 17, uh, starting in verse 8, it says, Then Amalek came and fought with Israel and Rephaim, and Moses said to Joshua, Choose us some men and go out. Uh, fight with Amalek. Tomorrow I will stand on the top of a hill with the rod of God in my hand. So Joshua did as Moses said to him and fought with Amalek. And Moses and Aaron and Hur went up to the top of the hill. And uh, so it was when Moses held up his hand uh, that Israel prevailed. And when he put his hand down, Amalek prevailed. But Moses' hands became heavy so that he they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it, and Aaron and Hur supported his hands, one on one side and, and one on the other side, and his hands were steady until the going down of the sun. So Joshua defeated Amalek uh, and his people with the edge of the sword. This is, this is key because many pastors, myself included, we feel like that when we, when we minister, when we pastor, we're doing this all alone. It's very easy to feel that way, um, sort, of, sort of like the, the prophet did of old when he said, I'm the only one that has never bowed the knee to Baal and come to find out. God said, no, I've got a few hundred hidden caves that have never done that. But he didn't know that. And as a pastor, it's, it's very easy to feel overwhelmed and feel like, nobody's with me on this. I'm, I'm all by myself. I need some help. And uh, we're making progress, but I'm doing it all by myself. And so one of the key ways that you can integrate men, because men need to be busy doing something. They need to feel like they're a part of something. Um, and, and when you could take a group of guys that's not the deacons, uh, I would in, if there's some that are, that's great, but I would encourage you to find men apart from that. Uh, uh, some godly men who can you can bring in. And if you're the pastor, this is only going to help you. If you're not the pastor, but you're the men's leader, get with your pastor on this. And you're, you'll probably find that your pastor would be more than willing. He'd be excited to have this happen. That possibly on Sunday mornings, there'd be a time before service, uh, even Sunday evening before service, that you can have your men gather around the pastor, lay hands on him, and pray for him. Pray for wisdom, pray for anointing, pray for power, pray for guidance, pray for God's words to be in his mouth. Uh, you're going to find that that pastor's probably going to be all for it. I would be all for that taking place. By having a pastoral prayer team, not only do you have your pastor covered, but it's going to put down some things when people, unfortunately... There are those that want to come against the pastor, um, roughly 10%. In any given situation, from, from one person I had heard in studying, 
said that generally a pastor has about 10% that are against him uh, on any given thing. Could be a personal thing, could be a principal thing, I don't know. But by having men gather around the pastor, it keeps the pastor strong. It keeps him feeling secure because if a pastor does not feel secure, if he does not feel safe, he's not going to pastor to his highest effectiveness. And so by having men gather around the pastor, praying for him, letting him know that he's got men supporting his arms that are helping him to fight the fight, your church is going to be the stronger for it. Now, if you're in a church where you are you feel like you're inundated with people that are against you, then there, there's deeper problems that are going to have to be addressed beyond men's ministry. But one of the ways that you can help turn things around is getting people praying, and specifically getting people praying for the pastor. Um, because sometimes as pastors, we're not right. Sometimes we are in the wrong. And by having men pray for us, that keeps conviction on us to do what is right. So I want to encourage you um, to have in your men's ministry, you need to have men of prayer. If you go back and listen, and especially for guys my age and below, a younger generation, don't discount what the older pastors say. Don't discount some of these stories because you'll come to find out there are some things that they did way back in the day that worked because of, of what they were doing. And, and, and while methods change, there, there are some things that need to remain and uh, it used to be that the pastor and a group of men would get together for a prayer breakfast, not necessarily your, your once a month men's devotion. But there was a regular time where a pastor would get together with men and they would have breakfast and then they would have a time of prayer. And um, some things shouldn't be forgotten. Some things should not be gotten away from. Uh, it's a, if you could start a, a prayer time with men, getting men praying. I don't, don't discount what, how women are praying or, or hope the kids are praying, but it's men. Things really rise and fall spiritually in the church on the shoulders of men. And so I want to encourage you to get your men praying, period. If it's a, if it's a prayer breakfast, and again, I'd, I'd really highly encourage it to be apart from your monthly men's gathering, have them pray then, that's awesome. But something different, something else. If you can get your men praying, uh, you're going to help your church. And specifically, if you can develop a pastoral prayer team, not the pastors praying, men praying for the pastors. And if you've got pastoral staff, uh, there should be some time where the whole staff is brought together and you gather around the staff, and these men are praying over the staff, God's covering, God's blessing, God's anointing, God's conviction, God's wisdom, uh, God's favor. But if you'll do it specifically over the senior pastor, you're going to find some things turn around in your church. Because when people are praying, God pays attention. The Bible says that the prayers of a righteous man are powerful and effective. King James says that they, it availeth much. Your, your prayers are going to be powerful and effective. They're going to get a lot done. And the best place that you can invest them is over the spiritual head of the church. So let me encourage you with this, with this uh, um, instructional video. Uh, get you guys praying. Before you do anything else, if there's any part of men's ministry that you could fashion right off the bat besides starting it, it would be this, get some guys praying specifically over the pastor and then over the things of the church. But if they'll be the pastor's friend and hold the pastor's arms up, you'll find the church get healthy and, uh, and, and incorporate more men and more men. I'm telling you, as a pastor, I would thrive on that. So uh, you use your men. Use them as prayer warriors, a pastoral prayer team that will gather around and do the work. God bless you. Pray for great things in your men's ministry. Uh, if you need help, if you need any, uh, any kind of assistance, uh, please get hold of us at the district office uh, in Little Rock and, uh, and go to uh, araog.org. Uh, if you get hold of me, uh, uh, Mike Sullivan, the uh, uh, training coach for the district, uh, you can get hold of me at, at Mike at poeandassemblyofgod.org. Poen with a Y, not a W. 
And uh, God bless you. We love you. Have a great week in men's ministry.